video, we will be visiting Sapporo, the capital of Japan's northernmost island of Hokkaido. I was very lucky to have visited the city in February of 2020, right before the coronavirus shut down much of the country. This video will highlight my top five things to do and eat as I take you around the snow covered city which resembles a winter wonderland. One of the main reasons I wanted to visit Hokkaido last winter was to attend the snow festival. The Sapporo Snow Festival is an annual event that is held at the beginning of every February. It's by far Japan's biggest winter event and attracts over 2 million people annually. It is free to attend and there are three sites, two of which are centrally located in a third smaller site just outside of downtown but more suitable for children and families as there are lots of outdoor activities to enjoy. The two sites that I visited were Otori Park and Susukino. The Susukino site is located in the entertainment district and featured nearly 100 beautiful ice sculptures. The theme for 2020 was Finding the Light on Ice and the site offered both a visual and physical experience as there were many interactive ice sculptures that you could sit on, slide down, or walk through. You could also take a break in either the hot milk bar or the beer bar. It was snowing heavily that day and it was interesting to see so many people use umbrellas. Otori Park, which is the festival's main attraction, spans across downtown in an east-west loop that is 1.5 kilometers long. It took us about one and a half hours to walk around and sightsee. Here, you will find the festival's largest snow sculptures built by teams from all over the world. Some structures are over 15 meters high. I didn't get a chance to film footage during the day, but one of the main attractions was a jump ramp where you could watch skiers and snowboarders perform very advanced jumps in the air. The site, however, really comes alive at night with the bright light shows and the projection mapping on the snow sculptures. The other end of the park features smaller snow sculptures which are crafted locally by Sapporo citizens. Unfortunately, winter in 2020 in Japan was unusually warm, so many of the snow sculptures had started melting and lost its intricate details by the time we visited. And if you get hungry on your walk, there are plenty of food vendors that sell popular dishes like ramen, crab, scallop, and barbecued meat. Originated from Sapporo, soup curry is a relatively young dish that combines the Japanese curry with a French style meat broth. The end result is a flavorful curry soup that is served with a braised chicken leg and locally grown vegetables like peppers, eggplant, and pumpkin. It was the perfect meal on a cold snowy day. And yes, the food really does taste as good as it looks. I would highly recommend it if you are ever in Sapporo. You can customize the spice level and the amount of rice, but be warned, on a scale of 1 to 20, I got only 4, very hot, and that was already enough to break me out in a sweat. You can't leave Sapporo without having tried their miso ramen. We picked a restaurant called Menya Yuki Kaze, which was not inside the famous ramen alley, but is very popular with locals and Japanese visitors. We got there around 10 p.m. and even though there were only 15 to 20 people in front of us, we waited for over two hours. Their ramen is made with a blend of three types of miso and a rich pork and chicken broth. The soup is much heavier than your typical bowl of ramen and comes with a very plump, thick piece of chashu. I'm not sure I would wait in line for two hours again, especially in the freezing cold. I had to run across the street to 7-Eleven many times for warmth and a hot drink only to realize that this ramen shop was so famous here that there was already an instant noodle version sold in the convenience store. If you're in town next time, not during a holiday or major event, you should definitely check it out. One of the places I didn't expect to enjoy as much as I did was the Sapporo Beer Museum. As the name suggests, the internationally loved Sapporo beer originated from the city. The museum is free to enter or you can choose to have a tour for 500 yen. No videography was allowed inside but photos are. Once inside, you will see a giant beer brewing vat and various exhibits detailing the history of the company. After the tour, there is a bar where you can purchase a beer flight for 600 yen. The beers were Black Label, Classic, and Katakushi. Classic is the one sold internationally, but apparently the best-selling beer in Japan is the Black Label. 
Kaitakushi is their original recipe which uses only hops, yeast, and water. Honestly, as an amateur, it was hard for me to tell them apart, but I really like the rice crackers and peas they gave you to snack on while you sample the beers. If you enjoy museums or just like having a beer, this is a must do. Mongolian barbecue, or Genghis Khan, which translates into Genghis Khan, is a very popular dish in Hokkaido. Although you can order different types of meat, it's best known for grilling lamb on the special convex metal skillet. This particular chain alone had five shops within 10 minutes of each other by foot. That's how popular it is with the locals. They ended up eating very late that night because the waited dinner time was almost two to three hours. It is very common to have this with kimchi and once cooked, dip the meat in a spicy soy sauce with sesame seeds and grated garlic. We ordered a mix of lamb and beef and it paired perfectly with an ice cold Sapporo. One of the things that we wanted to do but was unsuccessful at was going up Mount Moiwa for a panoramic night view. Unfortunately, it was snowing too hard that night, so we had to abandon the plan. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I will be releasing more videos from my trip to Hokkaido, including visiting the towns of Otaru, Niseko, and Lake Toya. Thanks for watching. See you next week.